Uh, I see the treatment landscape evolving a lot. Uh, in the last few years, we've seen the benefit of IL-17 and IL-23 blockade. Here are drugs that don't have black box warnings for malignancy or infection, so they are substantially safer than what we used to use, um, and they are very effective. The uh, PASI uh, 75 levels in approaching 90 percent, uh, even respectable PASI 100 levels uh, are occurring with these drugs. So, uh, so I think that uh, uh, more and more patients will be shifted to IL-17 and IL-23 blockers. Um, there's a little bit of hazard in that biosimilars uh, for the TNF blockers are just coming out. And, you know, will insurers push patients to those less expensive drugs remains to be seen, but certainly they carry more risks with them. Um, uh, I see also that on the horizon, <clears throat> there are many more IL-17 and IL-23 blockers in development, uh, and I think that that's going to be uh, uh, the future uh, of the treatment of psoriasis. Uh, I think we are going to do, see much more in the way of IL-17 and IL-23 blockade uh, among the patients that we treat. There are several JAK inhibitors in development, and they are in development actually more for atopic dermatitis than for psoriasis because there's a bigger need there. We don't have as many biologic therapies for atopic dermatitis, although that also is changing. Uh, we'll be seeing more and more biologics for atopic dermatitis. But the JAK inhibitors have already been tested for psoriasis. Tofacitinib is approved for psoriatic arthritis. Um, it was uh, proposed to the FDA for psoriasis, and they have very good, well-done studies which showed that it was at least comparable to etanercept. Uh, but the FDA chose not to approve it for psoriasis, uh, uh, probably because it is uh, somewhat immunosuppressive. There was an increase in herpes zoster cases. Um, and, you know, had that come in front of the FDA 20 years ago, tofacitinib is certainly safer than cyclosporin and methotrexate. Uh, and I think it might have been approved 20 years ago. But now, because we have all of these biologic therapies, the FDA didn't approve it for psoriasis. Um, the other JAK inhibitors that, have, um, that are coming out uh, also have some side effects. They've been associated with some thromboembolic events. They've been in, uh, associated with some immunosuppression, although certainly the side effect profiles of all of those drugs uh, is superior to the pills we currently have, uh, methotrexate and cyclosporin primarily. Uh, and that's both for atopic dermatitis and for psoriasis. Um, so, so the drugs have some uh, uh, major um, safety advantages, but they also have efficacy advantages over uh, the safer oral therapies we have for psoriasis, apremolast and acetretin. Uh, the JAK inhibitors, by and large, are more effective than those. Um, the one that has been tested and had very good phase two results with very little downside was a TIC2 inhibitor, a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Uh, and, um, uh, I, and I do think that that will get approval. Uh, and the question will rest on what happens in their phase three trials. Will they have blood monitoring? Will they have uh, safety warnings um, that are comparable to the Janus kinase inhibitors that are currently available? Or will it get a, a uh, better side effect profile and better package insert? as a result, and that remains to be seen.